Well, I'm out. Here you go. Do we have to play with him? <laughs> He's using the same currency we're using, isn't he? Right. I'll see ya. I've got five picture cards. Is that any good, Pat? Come on, Kings. Number four section. What's the you got here? <laughs> oh, right. on the uh, yeah, new so reinforcement. Oh, great! Look at this. You done more damage in one hit than Fritz has done in four weeks. Oh uh, well, I'll, I'll fix it up for you. Here, don't touch anything. Just, just walk through. Okay. Don't touch anything. <laughs> just, just walk through up there to laughing boy. Right out of the way. Right on. Right, yeah, fine. Right, my name's Carter. Yeah, sight right. Carter. Yeah, I'm the new replacement on the Lewis gun, the, the new number two. Hmm. Did I say something wrong? No, of course not. Bluey over there's always looked after his number twos, haven't you, mate? There's, there's been a few, has there? Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, maybe I'm the one to break the moss, eh? <laughs> yeah, lucky enough. Is all that money mine, Pat? No, I want you to win something back. All right, you blokes, what was all the racket about? You throwing a party or something? Yeah, a friend just dropped in. <laughs> Oh, I'd bury that stew if I were you. Oh, God, I'm mate. Welcome aboard. Right. See anything, Sharky? <laughs> yes, Mr. Flanagan. Two blackbirds having a naughty and something that looks like a half-starved magpie. Don't use bikes like that, Mr. Flanagan, or something. Why do you say that? Well, why, why were you laughing and... Ah, oh, doesn't pay to let officers get ahead of themselves, mate. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, I suppose not, eh? Don't bloody crazy. These yanks money just got here. They look as if they bought the place. Got the money and I'm feeling lucky. We got the dice right here. Let's go. Okay, guys, who wants some action? Wait, you nothing. Yes. 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 Here we go. Come on, seven. Seven. Come on. 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 You got any money? Oh, I got a bit. Sir! <laughs> you are surely welcome. Thank you very much. Even money, boys. Even money. Come on. Yeah. Pat'll fix them. Come on. Dead right, Puddin. And when he's taken all their money, they'll have to go home, won't they? Come on, Here! Yeah. Seven! Come on, 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 Hey! Come on. 
How'd you go, Pat? Uh, not too good. You mean you lost? Yeah. How much? A lot. Perhaps. Stupid bloody game anyway. You see anything, Carter? Oh, yeah, I've seen three blackbirds. Oh, look, were... Forget the wildlife, mate. I'm talking about Germans. You know the ones with the funny helmets? Oh, uh, no, I've never seen any of them, sir. Well, keep looking. Yeah, so. Keeping the company going with life's and smiles, Pat. What's up with Cleary? Lose his rabbit's foot. Ah, oh, the Yanks cleaned him right out of crap. Woo now we do have a morale problem, mate. Thanks, Kidder. What do you make of it, Bill? Never been this quiet. I reckon Fritz has just about shot his bolt. I don't know, there's still about 200 divvies of them out there. Hmm, might be. Kaiser was talking to a German prisoner the other day. A German frontline soldier is now more worried about his folks starving back home. Well, it's time we should end it then. You were that keen? No, mate, I just want to go home. Sort of some of them grenades there, will you put? Here's my old granddad, Sid. Worry never made the family fortune. What did Dad say? I don't know, like you, son, I never met him. <laughs> Where are you going, mate? Oh, just gonna have a look around. The Germans are over that way, Pat. Yeah, so are the souvenirs, mate, and souvenirs mean money. Yeah, but Fritz will get you. Yeah, but I've got to get a bankroll, haven't I, if I'm gonna win back all that money I lost at Craps. Listen, Pat, if Bill finds out about... Shh! Anyone dobs me in? They're on 10% interest. for getting stuck into the slops, isn't it, boys? Nah. Always a pleasure to deal with old soldiers. They know the score. Anyone speak English? Yeah, a little. Good. And tell me, do you blokes always start out the day with a champagne breakfast? <laughs> breakfast? We like to get dinner. We have come here from the field kitchen. Our cook. <laughs> Our cook has nothing but black bread. Such bread. Hey. Slowly, Pritz. Hans. Okay. Hands. It's half timber, nine. So. Uh... Sawdust. Yeah. Ugh. What else is in it? <laughs> anyway, where you blokes are going, there's lots of tucker. Mm. Food. Have you bully beef? Crikey, you must be starving. Yeah, tons of it. Hey, flies. Hey, <laughs> and bully beef. Anyway, let's get going. Ah, uh, hang on. No point in leaving the plonk. Grab four bottles each. Fifth 
Raleigh. Raleigh. What is it, man? There's something out there. Dang it. Yes, sir, I do agree that would be the best course. They're going to throw the book at him. No. As a matter of fact, the Colonel commends his initiative. He also said that if things out there are like Pat reckons, then it might be time to stir Fritz up a bit. Pat thought he was a flu. Agreed. But sooner or later, Bill, the old brass hats are going to demand identification of German units opposite. And when they do, they'll insist on the old trench raid. 1916 style. Crikey, the boys will jack up. They will murder. Yeah, I reckon. So that's why we're going to do it our way. Half platoon stunt for a start. Well, he wants us to approach from the east. We want Kaiser, Louie, the pudding. Bleib still. Kept off. It is hoffnungslos. Die Stellen sind überall. Pat, any more? All clear, mate. Cleary. Come on, get out of here. The rest of you likewise. Up! Come on, rouse! Kaiser notified battalion, new company position 500 yards forward. And add Operation Peaceful Penetration successful. The appointment of a new general up at Corps headquarters doesn't usually generate much excitement in a frontline digger. But General Monash, a part-timer, not a regular, was an interesting choice. Change was very definitely in the air. Gentlemen, the Corps Commander, Lieutenant General Monash. Sit down, gentlemen. From today, the five Australian divisions will be grouped into one Army Corps with an Australian commander. This has taken nearly four years to achieve. From now on, we fight side by side. Now, one more point before we move on to the agenda. During the wild emergencies of last month, when we and the New Zealanders and the Canadians played the larger part in stopping the German offensive, and when at one time the Australians held over 30% of the British front, there was no mention of our role in official communiques. I have informed GHQ that Australians are a nation of sportsmen. They like to see the scores go up on the board. <laughs> This will be our policy from now on. We have 54 items on the agenda. Let us begin, blame me. Item one, the training of all brigades in close cooperation with tanks. All right, move your asses, blockheads. So why don't you walk like your old brother? Hurry up, hurry up. Don't you know your left foot from your right, mister? I've just been shunting me up and down the paddock all day. I'm a walking barrage. Where'd you get down here? Oh, yesterday. Old mob has come down to help train these yanks. 
Hey, they're keen as mustard, too. Remind me of myself in 1914. <laughs> you? Oh, well. The others, then. Hey, something big in the wind? Yeah, yeah, big enough. Oh, every time I've heard that in the last three years, we've ended up up the well-known creek in a barbed wire canoe. Oh, well, not this time. In any case, you blokes won't be in it. Music to me ears. Hey, when are you coming to see us? As soon as the boss lets me. Captain Barrington! Who's that? The boss. Right, you better be off. Good to see, see you, Marty. Yeah. Come on. Come on, you bastard. Right, now this is the Arrowhead Formation. Very handy in advancing across open country while still affording some flank protection. Now the Lewis gun is placed on the open flank, or high ground. Look at him. He looks like a staff officer too. Feel funny! <laughs> Kaiser, <laughs> put hell on him. Strike me, eh? Flash Jack from Gundagai. Flanagan. Stand fast. Carry on, Lieutenant. I'm not used to seeing my staff officers greeted so affectionately. My old platoon, sir. Well, they obviously haven't forgotten you. No, sir. I don't suppose I could just We're see too busy, Barrington. Yes, sir. You have a copy of the timings for the tank night march to the start line? Yes, sir. Also a schedule of overhead flights to cover the noise. I want you to go over every inch of their route, recheck all timings down to the second, and have it on General Blamey's desk tomorrow first thing. Yes, sir. So, if things go to plan, I can't imagine them not, seeing what a stickler for detail he is. We could be in for a cheap win. And in turn, that could mark the way for the future. Marty? Hmm? Is that offer still open? What? Marriage? Eh? Hey? Love, why don't you ask them to send you home now? Then I could hand in my resignation. Maybe we could even travel back together. We could be out of this in weeks. Love, it sounds wonderful. But I can't. Why? After four years, you just can't walk out. I mean, there's too many... Look, we're getting near the end. We can finish it soon, I know. Who's we? The AIF, the Corps, the Battalion. I can't leave while they're still here. Okay. You okay? I'm fine. Won't be long enough. No. Batteries are all in place, 640 guns in all. The infantry brigades are moving up into the concealed positions. There's been no enemy reaction so far. Well, this one must go perfectly, blame me, to show there is another way. Well, blame me. The US commander in chief has withdrawn authority to use his troops in the attack on Hamel. Damn it, at the 11th hour. General Pershing has his president's authority that the US Army will only be committed to battle under its own commanders. I wish we'd had that authority in 1916. But this has been discussed for weeks. Why now? Well, the plan's unworkable without them. There's no chance of getting extra Australian troops up in time. Well, from one side of France to the other, it's about 700 miles, right? From one side of Australia, Hey, Riley. Just mind that for you, will you? Saving up your wedding present. We ain't coming. We've been three weeks training with you guys and old Blackjack leave it to the home turn to pull up. Yeah, American Independence Day, and we're gonna look yellow. God damn, I never thought I'd be ashamed of the United States uniform. 
I've even written to my folks in old saying, we'll be with the Aussies. Hell, they had my granddaddy was second man up on Missionary Ridge. I mean, what the hell would he be thinking now? Go ahead anyway. Yeah, that's what he'd say. Well, we'd stand out like a pimple on a goddamn pumpkin. I can fix that for you. Say, that's great. How many more you reckon I want? Oh, about 15. Do that easy. Hey, gee, how can we ever thank you? Oh, well, there'll be a small handling fee to cover me costs. Yeah, sure, sure. And there's a condition. If you're going to wear Aussie uniforms, you can't play that game of craps anymore. You're going to have to play two up. Two what? Up. What's that, some kind of soda pop? <laughs> now, it's a game of chance. Involves throwing two pennies in the air. <laughs> Sounds like kid <laughs> stuff. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Anyway, as soon as you get the uniforms on, we better whip outside and get started on the two up. <laughs> Make you look like authentic Aussies, you know? <laughs> What will you do when you are home in Australia? I don't know, really. You will make boots? No, I could never go back to that again. I thought I might have a go at being a writer. Oh, you'll make a good writer. Why well, will I be a good writer? Pat thinks you are a good writer. He says you are a bloody marvellous writer. Well, I'd better give it a go then. When we get back. Yeah. You are going back with Pat? Marie, I don't really care what Pat does. I thought that you and me might go back to Australia together. If you wanted to. Well, that's what I thought. I don't know what you think. Obviously, there's a lot to consider. You don't just pack up and take off for another country without giving it a lot of thought. And... Damn stupid game. Oh, no, you're just starting to get the hang of it. Back tails this time. Head, yeah. <laughs> you watch your head. All my little beauties made it up. Five minutes to spare. Okay, men, line up on the white cake. And, uh, what part of Australia does he come from? Ah, uh, I think it's a little place called Chicago. Some place in Tasmania. Five, four, three, two, one. Ah, no. Cheerio. Yeah, I'm coming with you. Wouldn't miss it for quids. Good luck. Do sit down, blame me. I can't concentrate. Have we left anything to chance? Not that I can think of. Well, then. Coffee.
Come. Ta da! Shouldn't that be an Australian flag? At least American? No, mate. This will let Fritz know that Hamel is once more part of France. Permanently. Did you lose your way, Captain? Core HQ is miles that way. I wonder what all the noise was about. <laughs> How'd it go? Like clockwork. Makes a nice change, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Like a lift, old man. Will it? <laughs> <laughs> How you mean? Good. Oh, good. Are you? Barrington, send him in. Barrington. He's been missing since zero hour. I ought to be brought up as soon as he surfaced. Where the hell have you been? Carrying out your directive, sir. My what? Well, your instructions were to quote you, sir. Observe the operation of tanks and be prepared to recommend improvements in techniques. That did not mean involving yourself in the thick of battle. Sir, if I was to comply with your instructions, I obviously had to be where the tanks were. Don't be impertinent with me. Uh, Captain Barrington, do you think you could share with us the benefits of your close observations? Well, there were a few problems, sir. It was too dark at zero hour for them to see much. We need a better system of target indication. But in daylight hours, they were first rate. Thank you, Captain. Sir. For Barrington. A glass of brandy to celebrate the fact that you're still with us. Thank you, sir. And to fortify you for the job ahead, I've submitted plans to General Rawlinson for a much bigger attack, the whole corps this time. Well, I look forward to the detailed planning, sir, after which may I be permitted to resubmit my application. Hmm? His weekly request to be posted back to his old battalion. <laughs> Done the bloody crows. What are we, pack horses or race horses? Not too many thoroughbreds around here, Pat. Not in front of me, there ain't. You'll keep. We were finally in open country. The trenches and the mud were left far behind us. This suited the diggers down to the ground and they went at it with all their might. It soon became clear that we'd dealt old Fritz a knockout blow. A lot of them surrendered, but some, particularly the machine gunners, fought to the last. Later we heard that the German chief Ludendorff declared that this battle was the black day of the German army. The day in which they lost the war. How far to the front, digger? Another five miles. Five miles? Yeah, went through old Fritz like a packet of salts. Five miles in one day. What's this war coming to? Yeah, and to think that it took nearly six months to take passion back. Yeah, you didn't have to run five miles to buy into a fight back then. Yeah, put the muzzle cover on. You'll need all your breath. Come on, the eight. Mates in the pup battalion are getting knocked about. What's he mean, pup battalion? They were formed out of us after Gallipoli. The eight gave pups and they produced the 60th battalion. Got yourself a blighty leave, have you, Sophie? Crikey, you still alive, Cleary? Hey, he's talking about double letter penny. <laughs> Where's the artillery? We are run them. What about tanks? We all got bent yesterday.
CCO's been best from behind. Easy, mate. I have better got Da haven't we in Italy. They wanted to surrender, but the corporal kept shooting. I had to stop you. Okay? Move on! Hold up! Let's not get Schnell! We won't be going anywhere with those buggers up there, mate. We'll have to knock them. It's going to be expensive. Take 20% casualties already. That's what we get paid for, mate. I reckon the two old stages would lead this one. If you insist. Tara! Go left! Sit down! Sounds right, Bill? Right. Mama! way to take command of the company, did you? Congratulations, mate. Roll it! Rolly, how are you? The old hand's okay, huh? So far. The company's all yours, sir. Thank you. Carry on, Mr. Flanagan. And look after that platoon of reprobates. What's going on? It's a great war, mate. It's in all the papers. Thanks. Bill! Yes! Get the mask on! Miles, so fast and in fact without run communications. 
put every available unit onto it. I have, sir. There are a few messages I think you should hear, sir. Hmm? The Army Commander will visit the HQ tomorrow. Good, we can talk about communications. Uh, followed by the Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Haig. Also, the Chief of the Imperial General Staff will be coming from London with Winston Churchill and the Prince of Wales. Good Lord, man, have we got enough? Uh, there's more, sir. Congratulations from all the Prime Ministers and the American President. Uh, Generalissimo Marshal Foch is also coming. And the Premier of France, Monsieur Clemenceau, has expressed a wish to visit you personally. I'm sorry, play me. It's a little sudden. It's a great honor they pay you, sir. Not to me. To the men who are still fighting out there. The uh, lucky last, sir. A message from the palace. King George will arrive in two days to knight you in the field. Well done, sir. Hi, sweetheart. Rolly? Kate? Yes. I only just found out. Oh, it's only a mouthful of that Blue Cross gas. But I must say, it's been a nice week's rest. If only I could see to write up my diary. Well, I could come next week and give you a hand. That's real nice, Kate. But I've got to be getting back. Besides, I'll be fine by then. We could organise you a week's convalescence by the sea. Oh, thanks, Kate, but I've got to be getting back. Why, in God's name, do you all feel the need to rush back? Because the platoon's down to 15 blokes. But that's not your concern. You've done your share. Yeah, but I have to look at myself in the mirror. Martin's going real well. What? He's our company commander now. He turned up on this tank and captured a machine gun post. Well, he's been in the thick of it ever since. He says that the Germans are just about done for. And if we keep on pushing hard, the whole thing could be over in a few weeks. Oh, you'd be real proud of him, Kate. Oh, mate. Bloody hell. What a waste of a break. What are you going to cook about? You're on 5%. You said 10% last night. Oh, 10%. No, I didn't want to miss this opportunity, mate. I'm overstocked with Lugas, and this plague here at the 60th, he's overstocked with helmets. You want to worry sometimes, Cleary? Free enterprise, mate. It's called free enterprise. Right, no, that's good, but we're going to need these returns in triplicate from now on, all right? Listen, Frank, make out another requisition order form for rations, will you, and send it in, even if the bastards aren't taking any notice of it. Is it officer coming Hope it's good news, sir. The order stands. The battalion must be broken up. Sir, so we'll obey every order except that one. We won't see the end of the 60th. You're aware the reinforcements from Australia are drying up? That we can't build all the battalions up to strength? Military common sense dictates that some battalions must be broken up to strengthen the others. Sir, you've always taught us that loyalty to the battalion is our first duty. Well, a lot of good men have died believing that. To all of us here, particularly the originals. 
The battalion is the only home we've got after four years away. It's what we fight for. You realize there could be serious consequences? Doesn't seem much compared to losing the battalion and all its memories. Sir, the men here have talked about it. We're all agreed on this course of action. We've elected our company commanders. Guards and pickets have been maintained. And the battalion administration will carry on as normal. Uh, just one more thing, sir. The boys have asked that they be put into the hottest spot in the coming attack so that either there won't be a battalion left or our reputation will be so bloody good they won't dare break us up. Hey, the good old fixtures, hey? That's a real jack-up. Yeah, fine point of law, Pat. In the British Army, they'd call that a mutiny. You pommy bastard. You still don't understand us, do you? I'll explain to you, lad. I mean, you didn't expect me not to go back, did you? No. But I hoped. Madame? Je vous félicite, mes enfants. Merci. The best. Of course. Goes with this. One bite. on the left hand. Oh. Damn you, Martin. Oh, it wasn't supposed to be like this. Not here, not... Love, the war's almost over. Another push, the Germans will be... Guys are all, mate. Make yourself comfortable. Must be very tiring for you watching men work like this. I haven't seen you go so hard since we dug in at Pozzias. It's for the 60th, mate. The brass have cut off their supplies. Oh, the jack-up. Yeah. So uh, all of the battalions are losing some of their supplies, and we pick them up here and sneak them in the back way. The other five battalions, are they still out? Oh, yeah, they're all good unions, man. All right, who's in charge of this bun fight? Oh, good day, Pat. What do you got for us? Ah, uh, real gourmet oh, stuff, right, Otto. Bully yours? beef, Anzac wafers. You'll need the usual sledgehammers and false teeth with them, though. Unload it, you lot, quick, before he decides to flog it to the French. I suppose you're eating in the officers' mess these oh, days. Oh, yeah, mate. yeah, that'll be the Thank day. You, Colonel. Yeah. How are the boys holding up? No, oh, they're rock solid. It's a bad do, Pat. Here we've got the best battalion in the AIF, you know. Hey, except for the 8th. Yeah? Who stopped the Germans at uh, Villas Bretonneux? Who stopped them at Asbrook? Well, Fritz is on the run because he won't stand up to Aussie battalions. So why break up the 60th in the last few minutes of the final quarter? Makes no bloody sense. Yeah, what has in the last four years? The thing is, the battalion officers are with us. They come over at night for a yarn, but they don't make any impression higher up. It's a trouble. Uh, I am looking for the uh, individual who's in command, uh, in charge of this battalion. You're looking at him, sir. The battalion will parade immediately. Who says? Brigadier General Elliot. Pompey. 
That makes a difference. Pompey himself. What do you blacks reckon? He's a real fighting man, Jimmy. Wouldn't be here for nothing. If we parade, it's the end of the battalion. Well, listen to what he has to say. Tell the Brigadier General there'll be a battalion parade in 15 minutes. Man of the 60th! You know me, and I know most of you. In the ranks, I see a few faces. Pathetically few. Of the men who fought their way up the gullies of Anzac with the old eight. I see men who were carried from the ditches at Fomel, who refused to give up even when the battalion was almost wiped out. I see others who survived the terrible storm of fire on the Somme and at Bullecourt. But most of all, I see the battalion that was one of the victors of Villers Bretonneau. When, in the darkest days of the war, you snatched victory out of defeat and fostered hope in the face of despair. You are an example to all the Allied armies. You are a living history of the deeds of the Anzacs. You put Australia's name before the world. In a moment, I'm going to give you an order. And I want you to think carefully what you are going to do. Now, you all know me well enough to know that I have never begged anything of you. I will not do so now. But I will ask you to think of Australia and the Anzacs. Our name is feared and respected on both sides of the line. You must do nothing to tarnish it now. The war is approaching its climax. The end is in sight. Let's finish it together. But Marty and Company HQ. They're walking right into it. Mate, 
the Irish. That's extraordinary, mate. That was exactly how I planned to do it. Here, Beaver, have that event in the Olympics. I'm backing you for the gold medal. Right. Deserves a better one than that. Well done, mate. Here, a bit close. If I hadn't been, I wouldn't have seen it to believe it. <laughs> oh, you go easy. Run up! Exceptional work. <laughs> Nights are getting chilly again. <laughs> How many jumping off tapes, huh? How many zero hours? Too bloody many, mate. Oh, there won't be many more. I hope so. There won't be many more Anzacs. That'll be over in a few weeks. Where have I heard that before? <laughs> so how are the boys? Just about buggered. Keep your head down, buddy. Let up the pressure from about the die house and the houses. I'll take care of those with the reserve. You go on, right? Guys up! Well, lads, time for the rat hunt. to the edge of the village. Sounds like they need you. Oh, there's a few houses left yet. Wouldn't I all take care of those? Well, go on. Driver Parsons, make sure you take care of the captain. <laughs> Lads! Where are they? Go, put Run! You bastard.
Lieutenant Flanagan. Recommendation for the Victoria Cross. On the morning of the 3rd of October, a concealed German machine gun which was disposed of the duty camp. Kate, mm. there's an officer out there asking for you. Can you relieve me for five minutes? Of course. It's Martin. Want to hear about it? He wasn't even fit. But he should have been home in Australia. It was his decision. Oh, yes, he had to get back to the battalion. You'd be the same way, wouldn't you? Maybe. Bloody men. The stupid sex. <laughs> expecting it. But as the weeks got on, I began to hope. Hope. That's for foolish young girls. Nothing ever changes. Sometimes. George. You know, yesterday was the fourth anniversary of my enlistment, Kaiser. Sometimes it seems like a week, other times a half a bloody century. What about you, mate? How long have you been in? How long? Let me see. 1,034 days. Ah, oh, you're a methodical bugger, aren't you? Goes with a name like Schmidt. Crikey, an Aussie German, eh? What a mixture. What about your relations on the other side? You reckon they'll chuck in the towel? Stories of famine and revolution in Germany. But they are stubborn people. If we strike fresh troops with a half strength battalion, we'll deal with it, mate. Bill, pull him out, mate. See what we got for breakfast today. Bully beef. Bully beef. Bully. What do you got, Bill? 
bully. Oh, good. Wouldn't want him to spoil us and soften us by giving us fancy tucker like baked beans and stew. Hey, Kaiser, what are those kids saying? They're saying that we're Australians. They've heard about us. They say that we're like animals in battle. Well, that's not very nice. Mind you, I know a few blokes who turn into animals in the boozer. I can't tell if they mean it as a compliment. Wen habt ihr zuletzt gegessen? Seit 14 Tagen ist nicht durchgekommen. You haven't had proper rations in a fortnight. Well, it's either that or eat behind a tree. So ein Gesinder. Mit sowas kann man kein Krieg gewinnen. What was that all about, Kais? He calls them snivelling cowards. No wonder they lost the war. They'd suck up to the enemy for a can of corned beef. Oh, it's not the bastard. Take it easy, Pat. He's just doing his job, mate. Doing his job? Well, if that's what rank does to a man, you can stick it. Your war is finished, pal. Nein. Wir kommen wieder. Drauf könnt ihr euch verlassen. Aber erstmals müssen wir die Bolschewiken und Schieber fertig machen, die uns in den Rücken gestochen haben. Kaiser? He says... We will be back. But first we will attend to the Bolsheviks and profiteers back home who have stabbed Germany in the back. Ask him if he'll accept a tin of bully from me. Yeah. All officers to headquarters. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, here we go again. All right, I'll be the mug. What's happening? Boys, you've all just lost your jobs. As of 1100 tomorrow, an armistice. All finny.
and that's an end to it. No more tears. Not even for him? No. Not for all the others who drove themselves back to the battalion. I don't think you understand, Kate. I don't bloody understand. I wouldn't be tearing myself apart like this if I understood. He wanted me. I wanted him. He could have gone home. Honorably. And waited for me. Can I read you something? In bitter safety I awake unfriended. And while the dawn begins with slashing rain, I think of the battalion in the mud. When are you going out with them again? Are they still not your brothers through our blood? Did you write that? I wish I had. You see, it was nearly four years, Kate. If he'd gone home, he would have been a stranger. Not to me. I don't know. The whole thing was a stupid, useless mess. All those lives just thrown away. He died for nothing. I honestly don't think you're right, Kate. Well, what were you fighting for then, your precious battalion? That'll be a great comfort to the orphans and the widows. 300,000 of us volunteered from a tiny country. Are we all fools? Who knows with Australian men? But it would have been wrong for us to back away from it. It would sort of been agreeing with the right of Germany to, to solve their problems by force. I think most of us saw it as a fight against war. Was it worth all this? What about you? Me where I've been and what I've done and seen. But what can I reply? Who knows? It wasn't I. It's someone just like me who went across the sea and with my head and hands killed men in foreign lands. So I must bear the blame because he bore my name. Oh, oh poor lonely Rolly.
Cheers. Glad you could make it. <laughs> Figured out what you're going to do when you get back home? Yeah. I'm going to set up a specialised machinery business. How about you? Staying with nursing? Mm -mm. Back to the bush then. Oh, anywhere but. You uh, ever been in business? No. But I could learn. I bet you could. I'd know where to get some capital. Exactly what I was thinking. Partner. Routine orders. You've been running the company well enough without me, mate. All right, but keep it short. For a start, it details the shipping arrangements. Mm -hmm. It seems the AIF is priority Z. So, the 1914 men are to go home first, followed by the 1915s, and so on, as shipping becomes available. So the old battalions will just fade away in dribs and drabs, eh? No heroes march down the main street. And the folks back home will never see them as they really were. No. Maybe just as well. Then there's a whole lot of details, timings, movement uh, orders. Your department, Bill. Then we come to part two. Awards and decorations. 1173, Captain R. Flanagan. 8th Australian Infantry Battalion. Quote, On the morning of the 3rd of October, 1918, Lieutenant Flanagan's company came upon a well-sighted German machine gun position, which was disposed to inflict heavy casualties on the unit. With complete disregard for his personal safety, Lieutenant Flanagan... Stop! It's the Victoria Cross. Two signals. Congrats from General Monash and arrangements for the investiture at Buckingham Palace. No bad for an amateur Flanagan. Way off the coast of Western Australia, a few of the diggers reckon they could smell the gum trees and wildflowers. It was a tradition among homeward bound Aussies, like seeing who was the first to sight the Southern Cross. The question I most dread from the family is, what was it like? I wouldn't know what to say. And not being able to talk means that us and our families will live with a four year gap for the rest of our lives. It's not that Australia's changed, we have. A lot of us beyond recognition. Not all, though. Some never do. Nothing wrong, Mr. Richard. I've been waiting for you, Conductor. Do you hear that? What's wrong? Well, there's a tramp or a swagman next door. 
And he's even got the cheek to kick up a row. I wonder if the railways are running at a loss. Oh, you mean Mr. Cleary, sir? Mr. Cleary? Democracy's run riot in this country. Well, Mr. Cleary has a valid first class ticket, sir. Then why the devil? Hey, I'll drop in and see if you've got any requests. That could only be Pat. Hey, Max. Oh, glad you made it, mate. Hey, you'd be Captain Max, wouldn't you, wouldn't you, sir? Yes. Hey, we heard about you up on Brudensine Ridge. I was in the 79. Were you? There was a day. A sergeant said a minute up there was like a lifetime elsewhere. Yes, yes, yeah, well, that'll be all. Uh, I think I'll open the bar next door, Max. These blasted war memorials. Every town in the entire electorate thinks it must have one. Isn't it? Yes. Oh, it's good to see you, Max. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, oh, that's all right. How are you? Good. I'm glad you could make it. Oh, how have you been? Very well. Come on, a bit more. Get the pedal. The clutch oh, turns no. in a second. 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 <laughs> I did. <laughs> Sometimes he was all right, sometimes he was talking about something. Well, Dad was a bit miffed. He wanted me to go and pay my respects to Sir Rupert, but three hours with Dad is enough. Here he is. Anyway, it's not every day I get to see you blokes. So, what are you doing now, sir? The Max. Well, that's really good. I'm in charge of the State Braille Library. We're getting new titles all the time, and there's plans for expansion. Oh, I'm glad you're doing well, Max, because it's your shout, mate. <laughs> Sorry, talking about myself again. Well, you always said you got short arms and deep pockets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Barrington, Mr. Flanagan. Oh, I've heard so much about you. Myself likewise. I hardly often spoke of you. Shall we say dinner at the house tonight? That would be a pleasure, thank you. Till then. Take it easy, love. We expected the ghost. Come on. Hey, come on. Yes, I always thought there was more to it, Pat. Oh, no, it's strictly business. Well, no offense, man. Of course. Well, no, I was thinking of it. Mr. Armstrong? We got here, sir. Rolly Collins. Rolly. It's good to see you, sir. Pat. Bill. Mr. Armstrong. Harold? I heard you were still in hospital. 
They let me out for the weekend. Skipper. Hey. Mr. Armstrong. I'd like to meet Dick Baker's sister, Kate. Miss Baker. How do you do? Guys. Good to see you, Bluey. Yeah, well, if we're going to treat this like a bloody funeral, why don't we make it a fair dinkum Irish wake? Yeah. Not yeah. the time my granddad passed away. Spare that... digger. Oh, all right. Yeah, uh, fill them up, landlord. Doubles all round. Easy on, Pat. Don't get rash, mate. You'll be dipping into our company's profits. Good point. Yeah. Put them on Mr. Flanagan's personal account. Oh, hey, there you go. He hasn't changed, has he, Mr. Armstrong? Hey, there you go, mate. I must have written to just about every newspaper in this country. And? Nothing. Look, there's someone I want you to meet. His brother was in the 8th, Martinium. Mr. Flanagan. Mr. Murdoch. My financial editor informs me your company's been well subscribed at the Stock Exchange. Well, you'll have to talk to my backer about that. Now, Mr. Murdoch, I'd like you to meet one of the survivors, one of the originals, Mr. Rowley Collins. Please, Mitch. Mr. Collins. Rowley wants to be a writer. When he was wounded back in 17, I took a look at his diaries, and I think he has the knack. Well, if those with Pat. Martin Barrington thought so, too. Do you know where my officers are, Mr. Collins? Yes, sir. 10 o'clock Monday. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Now, look, the government wants your full support on this repatriation bill. <laughs> Terms can't be as generous as we Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, we're here today to commemorate We're here today to commemorate the fact that a significant proportion of the young men of this country chose to volunteer for a war some 12,000 miles away. It is also true that in spite of their numbers, they greatly affected the outcome of that war, affected it by the qualities they brought to it. Initiative, courage, mateship, and humor. And in particular, we come to remember one battalion, the 8th, which suffered some 2,000 deaths in the performance of its duties. The numbers in every small town in this country are equally horrendous. And only the future will determine what effect this will have on our young country. Of those who came through the ordeal, I can do no better than to repeat the words of our Prime Minister. These men have crossed a gap which none of us who were not there with them can understand and that they themselves can never retreat from. It has been widely acclaimed that the sacrifice of our boldest and finest is justified on the grounds that this has been a war to end wars. This then truly is the time for prayer. 
both for the past and for the future. Almighty God, blessed be the memory of the men from this district who gave their lives in the Great War. We humbly pray that the magnitude of their sacrifice will grant us that peace first promised us by Jesus Christ, your only Son. We pray too for the survivors and their dependents and loved ones who in the years to come will live with the memory of pain and suffering. And we ask that the wounds and scars of this great conflict be healed, not only here, but in every land, so that the universal brotherhood of mankind will not remain forever a distant dream. We ask this, O Lord, for thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Private Rowley Collins will now read the ode. They shall not grow old, as we that are left will grow old. Age will not weary them, or the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Thank you.